Flip Devils, j Dog back with another Gaudio video. And today's video, we're going over video I did two weeks ago now. The Larry Lalande and Tom G. Warrior are total unappreciative canoes. Got that right, goddammit. 1.2k views, so we hit the thousand mark on that one. Good job there, Devils. <clears throat> and uh, 250 comments, so fuck, quite a few comments. Didn't look at anything yet, so let's get digging. Let's see what's in there, but uh, soon they're going to be talking about some canoes. So what do we got? 250 of them. Though. So we'll just search out questions unless there's something I want to read off because I think it's funny or whatever. But uh, okay, so there are some question marks. Uh, Ryan Id Zerta. You know, I've read several comments from you, Brad, Brad, before. J Dog, you still get that fun factor slash hype feeling before going to a show like back when you were a kid. Or now that you are older, is it is it not the same and, and more like routine? I still get hyped just like when I was a kid, pushing 37 now, brah, brah. Metal never fucking dies. Uh, I don't know if I get hyped. I wouldn't go as far as saying that. I mean, unless it's something like I'd really, like maybe if, like, if it was like, like I said, Hemorrhage or somebody I wanted to see for years. Or um, it'd have to be somebody I, I really want to see. But uh, a lot of the shows I go to, it's it's kind of like just the underground show that I've seen uh, many times. You know what I mean? Whether it be like Embalmer or something like that. Who I've seen a million times, uh, so I wouldn't say I'm hyped for it. It's a more just kind of a social event at that point. So it just it would really depend on I mean who it is. But like you know, DSI coming next month or whatever. Yeah, kind of hyped, I guess. You know what I mean? Definitely looking forward to it, and I'll definitely be there. So kind of in the middle. You know, it depends on what it is. <clears throat> What's next in here? Uh, from Pestilent Death. Hey, j Dog. on the topic of unappreciative canoes, what are your thoughts on Poison from Germany? In my opinion, Into the Abyss might be in the category of the most metal release of all time. Uh, I mean, yeah, as far as the time frame they're around, um, I guess they didn't get a ton of rec recognition, but at the same time, they kind of do, because uh, every time we've stocked Poison, uh, it's sold very well, especially before it was kind of like getting reissued a million times. I wasn't... Uh, Iron Pegasus definitely did some, and then what didn't uh, Nucor now start doing some too? A little later on. <clears throat> it was kind of getting a uh, little mundane and was uh, done over and over again. But as far as are they underappreciated? I mean, my th I, I mean, I, I like them. I, I never liked them. Into the Abyss, uh, for, for me, my complaints on it was uh, there was just four songs, and they're like definitely need to be chopped in half. I mean, there's no reason to be eight, nine minutes long, in my opinion. Uh, another thing that maybe threw people off at the time was um, they didn't really sound German. Not that that's you don't need to sound where you're from. They, they, to me, they always sound more South American, like an Atomic Aggressor or, or someone in that category. Also, uh, maybe that threw people off at the time. And then the incident, of this, like, wasn't it? It was recorded in like what, like eighty six or whatever, but it wasn't like officially came out until like what ninety two, ninety three, something like that. Years later, I don't know what that was all about. So maybe that just threw things off. And then other than that, they just have a bunch of demos. And uh, I don't know how well they were circulated, traded. So I just think it's, and then the name, obviously, they definitely the name didn't help them. You know, being say having the same name as that fucking shitty ass hair metal band, right? So, and it just did the one record. I guess we want to consider it a full length, since I mean, minute wise, I guess it is, but just four songs. So maybe that's why it's just kind of overlooked. I mean, the average person just looks, oh, this band really hasn't done anything. Bunch of ass sounding demos. That's what they're thinking, anyways. Because a lot of people don't even like demos. So. Just kind of overlooked them, you know. But in the underground, like I said, we've had them. They sold very, very well, especially when it was first getting reissued. So it's not like uh, in the underground, it's got overlooked. But if you're comparing it to bands like, yeah, Sodom, Creator, Destruction, like that from Germany, it's overlooked. But that, those bands, because they spilled into the, I guess if you want to call it mainstream as well, because people outside of the underground listen to them, whatever the, how the hell you want to take that. You know what I mean? Just like all the big bands, just like Cannibal Course, just like the side, just like, you know what I mean? Even Immolation at this point. Um, it's, if you want to, I don't, I'm not saying they're mainstream, but you know what I mean? They spill over into the non-underground fucking, probably annoying-ass fucking canoes that you bump into up panties. Some of them, you know what I mean? As a, po a band of poison, did not. Probably for the reasons I said. Would be my guess. Corey Raposa. I don't think I've ever fucking seen you in the comments there, Barbara. So shout out to you. <clears throat> maybe I maybe I've done some of Corey something I've done, I think. So maybe I have. But nonetheless, 
Hey, J Dog, how do you feel about non musical, non metal intros on metal albums? Do you generally hit the skip button and then get straight to the metal, as I do? <laughs> Bathory being a perfect example, or do you have any favorites? Been listening to the new <clears throat> Goat Blood Germany and the Rosemary Baby intro is one of the best I've heard, and more bands should learn from this. By the way, Skullfucking Norm again from Arpiety is a monster. Yeah, that's a good question as far as the intros. Some of them are kind of carried away. Yeah, I, I, so on the first Bathory, I can't remember, how, what is it, two minutes long maybe or so? But just the wind's blown and shit like that. It's like, I don't need to hear two minutes of fucking the wind's blown. If you want to do that because it's fucking for an ambience and start off the album, I get that. But let's, let's cut it down to 20 seconds. It's all you fucking need. But some intros, I don't mind if they're longer, if they are a cool-ass intro, but just wind's blowing, I, I, don't need 20, I don't need minutes of this. Uh, there's bigger offenders than that by a milestone, where it's just like, get to the fucking point. Um, I have no idea why some bands do that. Yeah, I mean, I think, personally, yeah, if you're going to kind of do like a, a spooky fucking ambient intro, which tons of bands do, keep it to 30 seconds. That's, that's all you need. I mean, we don't, we don't need some fucking tough guy where evil shit, where it's just dragged on and on and on and on and on. It's like, this is ridiculous. Uh, I'm trying to think of who, maybe you guys put, who's the biggest offender of the most dragged out fucking intro? Again, I don't consider Mortician and shit like that. Intro is dragged out. Now, maybe you don't like them, maybe you do. Just like Empatego, maybe you don't like them, maybe you do the intros because it's at least a plot storyline. I'm, I'm talking about like it was just winds blown or it's a fucking just acoustic guitar fucking, or just the flames of hell burning for, for minutes and minutes on end. Who's the, that's just somebody on the tip of my tongue where it's, it's retarded. It's like five minutes long. You're, why does he need five minutes of this? <laughs> Who is the biggest offender? Put it in there. Cause yeah, I'm definitely drawing a blank. Probably somebody in the black model world. I'm sure. Uh, so if you know who it is, who has the biggest, most dragged out, unnecessary as fuck intro, even if it's semi-cool, it's like, okay, this could have been chopped down to 20 to 30 seconds. It didn't need to be five minutes long. Put it in there, goddamn de devils, because I'm kind of drawing a blank as to who, but they're out there for sure. Metal Musician 6996, awesome to hear the insanity shout out. My band opened up for them along with Vader and Vital Remains in 2013 in Oakland. I've seen Insanity a few other times as well. Dave G from the band is an awesome dude. Yeah, I met Dave once, and that was in uh, Buffalo, New York. Was I think that's the only time I've seen Insanity play. Maybe they I think they played Cleveland too. Now is that that? Maybe, maybe so once or twice I've seen Insanity, but it was around. I think it wasn't twice. <laughs> enough, I think it was 2013, 2012, something around there. That sounds about right. Um, yeah, I mean, Insanity totally underrated. A 1985 demo, like nobody brings it up. Destroys all the shit coming out today, in my opinion. And but yeah, none of these kids—they don't even bring them up or know about it. Um, another one overlooked. <clears throat> Eric Evans. Really dig the channel, J-Dog. What do you think about the album Riding in Hell from the band Deteriorate? Um, I've listened to it twice when it got reissued. What was that? Um, was that Dark Symphonies I put out? I thought it was okay. It was kind of like an early 90s you know, death metal band that uh, I didn't hear until that time, until it got reissued. Band that kind of fell through the cracks. And uh, some of those bands, like, I would say 10 years ago, I was really excitedly checking all those bands out. But it got to the point I've heard so many of them. And where I did eventually find, I don't know about most or large portion of them, but a lot of obscure ones and, and own stuff or have the audio. But it, as I, in, in the time of um, searching those out or listening to all of them, some of them were becoming obvious. Oh, I see why this got overlooked. Or, oh, I see why they just did a demo and left. Or, I see why when they were around, nobody cared or knew about them. It was just, you know, just kind of like, it's this again, and their songs are nowhere near as strong as the guys that, that did get recognized in that same style. So... They kind of fell in that category. Didn't think it sucked. That's the style of music I prefer. But I'm just like, eh, songs really just weren't doing anything for me. If I was listening to it now, too, it would be a brand new listen. If somebody was playing it and I walked in the room, I would definitely be like, who are we listening to? Maybe I'd have a bigger, better uh, experience on the third time around or so. But that's what I remember of it anyways when I listened to it. The fire still burns. J-Dog with the influx of new old school death metal style bands cropping up. Who are some of your favorites, particularly ones that formed over the last 15 years or so? Last 15 years, fuck. Yeah, a lot of them coming out, the influx of which like we're playing 90s death metal again. 
a lot of it. I'm. It's all. It's all the kind of music I prefer, but I'm just like. And I, and I, I hate being that guy because I was kind of annoyed when I heard about it, at, and um, whether it had been Kanye or Don or or any of the other older guys that were me when I was first getting in this, when they were constantly talking about how repetitive the shit is. And now I'm kind of there myself where I'm like, this was repetitive by 1992, 1993. And now more bands are coming out and doing the same thing. Now I'm like, why? I mean, like, I just kind of don't get it. I mean, and then their songs aren't even that standoutish for the most part. Um, but there is bands that, that shine through. I mean, I keep telling, uh, there's that seven inch, seven inch demo, uh, Cemeterian. Uh, I love that, that Francisco's band that I loved. Um, Pharmacist, if you want to put them in the grindcore category or brutal death, whatever. So, I, I, so far, I've liked everything by Pharmacist. I've talked about them. Um, 15 years, I, I thought Skeletal was good. I mean, we, we end up putting them out too, but I was a fan of them before we even signed them. I had their uh, couple EP, like a 12 inch, two 12 inch maxis, I think. Uh, you know, 12 inch mini LPs, maybe a seven inch, but I owned a few things and I thought they were great. And that's why I uh, brought up signing them. Uh, Gouge, who we sound, they're another band in the last 15 years of death metal that I would, uh, that, I, that I really liked. So there is definitely bands, but it was in the last seven, eight years or so, it's definitely with uh, the whole Maggot Stomp thing. It seems like that was what he was signing. And I thought all that stuff looked cool, especially when he was first coming out of the bands. I'm like, oh, it's all, I, I, I like his, uh, what he's doing as far as the kind of music he's putting out. And he's sticking to only that. I think the, I like the niche, but I, when I, most of the bands I was hearing, like the two mold and someone just like, oh, I was like, oh, I was, this is kind of, I've, I've literally have heard this a million times. Like, and there's nothing that standoffish about it. It's great to have it in the background or whatever. That's the kind of music I prefer, but I'm just like, I mean, I just, I would rather just, grab an obscure band from 92 that did two demos and it disbanded that nobody knows. I'd rather, uh, scout that, you know, scout that out and fucking listen to that personally. That's just my, my take. But as far as the younger kids of today, they're not going to want to do that for two reasons. Kind of when I was talking about people falling off, number one, they're not gonna be able to find it as easy. And number two, uh, you, you can't look cool saying that you can't, you can't support a t-shirt. You can't, uh, uh, go on social media and talk about it with, and, and be in the cool club and they're, they're coming to town and playing, et cetera, et cetera. And the guys are roughly my age too. That that's, it's not a, it's not a cool, fun feeling feel. You know what I mean? Me, I was just in it for kind of just the music only. So as far as whatever else is doing, and uh, I didn't, I never gave a shit. So I would just rather go to back to an, an obscure oldie that got overlooked, but I don't want to be that guy in the last 15 years or so. Even the last couple, there is definitely death metal stuff that I for sure like, and, and purchased and owned and uh, and thoroughly enjoyed. They, but it's just for every hundred bands, there's probably one that I I was like, oh, okay, I'll actually buy this. There's others too that I'm drawing a fucking blank on, but uh, but there 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 is others. Chad Appel, well, J Dog, what are your thoughts on the two latest Carcass albums? I like them a lot. To be honest, uh, I don't even think I've officially listened to the entire uh, full for last full length. I heard a song on YouTube, wasn't very impressed. My cutoff when I heard that ten inch that they did before, um, there was a ten inch vinyl came in. I thought it was terrible, to be honest with you. Uh, the last thing I own by them is the surgical, what is it called, surgical steel or whatever. I own an LP of it, and it's okay. It's okay. I mean, I, to be honest with you, I mean, I if someone wanted to buy it, I probably would sell it to them. Um, it's kind of like. They're, the reason the problem is with Carcass, because I even like, to be honest, I even like Swan Song and Heartwork. I just think the band should have changed their name because they're completely different. It has nothing to do with Carcass. But when they came back, it's like, why didn't you pick up off like Swan Song or Heartwork? Where they're picking up is in that in between where they made the most money, Heartwork and Acroticism, right in the beginning. That's what they're doing the combination of. And it's extremely abundantly obvious those guys are doing it purely for a uh, paycheck. And I would, I would literally bet money those guys don't listen to metal whatsoever. I mean, maybe once a year they'll pop in Repulsion or something. But for the most part, dude, those fucking jackasses are listening to fucking uh, country, goddamn classic rock at the heaviest. That's it. They're, I mean, I will say it. I don't think those guys are in the metal. 100% don't think they are. I think they're about as fucking in the metal as James Hetfield is. Uh, I could be wrong. It's possible I'm wrong. But I would, I would literally bet money on it. And again, I don't give a shit like, no, no, J Dog. Well, I, I was partying with those guys, man, and we had fucking uh, whatever out in the background, death metal. 
that, they, again, I'm talking about when they're on their own time, own dime, driving to Walmart, doing their groceries. What are they listening to? They're listening to some silly ass fucking radio station. Garen fucking T. When they're in their own house, they're listening to no music. Well, they're just practicing instruments because that's your job at that point. And that's it. They're not listening to fucking death metal. By the, I mean, you mentioned pharmacists to them. They, 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 not only have they not heard it, and the only way they maybe has is they're at a party or something. Somebody played, oh, man, this sounds carcass worship. Guarantee are completely unappreciative. Guarantee don't like it. Guarantee don't care. All the fucking above. They don't own that. They don't listen to it. No way, no way, no how. Like, just flat out, they don't. Do they like bands like Hemorrhage and shit? Guarantee they fucking don't. Guarantee they don't. Okay, well, you know, maybe they don't want to listen to bands that, you know, they started that sound. Okay, do they like bands like fucking Dead Infection or Epitago? Guarantee they fucking don't. Guarantee they don't. Um, and you can kind of just, it's almost as comes off in those later albums, you know what I mean? At least with Swan Song and stuff, I just thought, kind of found it like a catchy, like, death and death rock album. It's almost like they were playing that from the heart. That's what they wanted to play. And they were taking a risk as far as it, uh, not sound as well, which I'm sure it didn't, as opposed to, like, I know Hartwood did. Uh, they did really well on that. But still, they were taking, they, they even decided to take a little further risk. Well, with the surgical, it's like, let's keep it where right around the top song albums, the Protestantism, and then it's just, and it's just, it's just watered down and mundane. And it's played by, quite frankly, just a bunch of posers, in my opinion. So, um, and that's come from me. And it's funny, like, me saying that, so anybody is going to get a fucking fended or pinned up in the nuts. Anyone that knows me knows I'm like the literally the biggest carcass fan of all time. The old stuff. I have, I'm pretty sure every single bootleg that exists, every bootleg vinyl. I've always known the songs off Reek and recite them, lyrics. Uh, memory's a little hazy on them now, but I definitely could in my teenage years. And symphonies and shit. No songs, top to bottom, everything. Listen to them all the time with some of my all time favorite albums. Like, they are, and I love Necroticism with Tools of Trade as well. And I, Heartwork, I think is a great record too. It's just that's where they should have changed their name. Um, the only song on there I didn't like was um, No Love Lost. That was kind of a fucking cheese ball. Um, but so like me saying this, you got to keep in mind, I'm literally, I guarantee you I'm a bigger Carcass fan than you. 100% guarantee fucking T. And everybody that knows me for years on end knows that. And that's come from me saying that those fucking posers are just doing this for completely fucking for money. I got no problem if you're doing your passion, you're making a living off. That's cool. I got nothing wrong with that. But if they're, it's just 100% for a fucking paycheck. And I just put it on, I'm like, Again, the newest album, I don't think I heard top to bottom. I mean, I, I heard one song on my head, don't really like it. Maybe not chucking in the trash like Metallica Load fucking or uh, some later shitty Celtic Frost. Because uh, that shit to me is just literally unlistenable. So I didn't put it in that category. But the 10 inch, we got them in the shop. I forget what it's called. Um, that I did, that was almost chucking in the trash. I was like, I, I'm not like, I mean, I was like, I don't like this at all. I forget if it's Carcass or whatever. I was like, I'm just not, I just don't like this at all. The Surgical, I'm like, eh. It was just kind of like almost forced, but I did listen to it a few times. I didn't hate it. I'm just kind of like, we did not need this record. That's that was kind of my uh, conclusion on it. Life Eternal. It's funny how Tom G hates his best stuff. Carcass does too. Put them in that fucking category. Do you think? Do you honestly think Bill Steer and Jeff Walker? Ken, I'll give him a cast because he's basically he's basically handicapped at this point. I mean, isn't he? I mean, from what I understand, like he's had brain damage. He was in a coma for a year, so poor guy. He gets a he gets a fucking pass on everything in life. As far as I'm concerned, he he suffered enough. But so Bill Steer and uh, fucking uh, Jeff Walker. I mean, do, do do you honestly think that they like Ricky Putrefaction, even symphonies? Why do you think they don't like, barely play any songs live off that? That like, they think it sucks. That's what they think. So they're in this. They're, they're in the exact same category as fucking Tom G, which. Uh, <laughs> Tom G, would I go up to him if in person? I probably wouldn't because I just wouldn't care. Because, quite frankly, majority, vast majority of his catalog I didn't do. Uh, th th he did that I, I never liked. <clears throat> and I got into Hellhammer and Celtic Frost, to be completely honest, a little bit later, probably more around age 17, 18. <clears throat> As opposed to Carcass, I got into very, very young, probably age 13. <clears throat> it was more band I grew up on. What I'm getting at, if Tom Warrior was in the same room, would I walk up to him and ask for a photo and autograph? I don't think I would. Honestly, I don't. Even, I, I literally don't think I would. If Jeff Walker and uh, Bill Steer were in the same room, yeah, I probably would. I would if I knew I was going to meet him. I'd probably bring Rika Future Faction LP or my picture disc, have him sign it and get a picture with him. I probably would just because those albums were so meaningful. I mean, they're literally some of my favorite albums of all time. I mean, top J Dog's top six or seven albums, whatever it did. Video. I mean, literally Rika Future Faction's in there. 
and Symphony's right there with it. For years, I always liked said I liked Symphony's more, but going back, so I don't know, I kind of like Reach just as far as the, all the originality too. So those are like some of my favorite records. They're in the top ten. So like, I probably would go up to them, but as far as status, because and when I say this, guys, it doesn't mean I fucking hate the guy. People take everything out of context. They think because you say something about somebody, you call out a flaw or something you don't like about them, that I automatically hate them and. I don't hate the guys, and they might be the coolest fucking guys in the world. I'm just saying they don't listen to fucking metal anymore. I'm just saying they're fucking posers doing this completely for music. Could they be completely friendly guys and nice guys, and I get along with them, have a beer, and maybe ask them about the old days that they don't appreciate, but I thought I'm fucking cool? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, it's not like I dislike the guys. I just think you're putting out crappy albums now that I'm not going to buy. Anyways, I'll finish off his goddamn thing. Uh, his message, uh, he's a legend and hates what, what made him... A, a, He's a legend and hates what made him a legend. Exactly. Just un totally unappreciated. What would you call the best comeback record from a band who broke up back in the day? Kind of answer this, and there's more and more I thought about it. Best comebacks for me would probably have been, because um, the majority of the time I don't like them, Pentagram Chili, the album they did, the Maleficis, the Malefice, Malefice, is that how you pronounce it? Probably the easiest word in the world to pronounce for most of the devils. <laughs> yeah, that's how you pronounce it, right? Malefice? Uh, I thought that was great. And honestly, I, I got to say, I liked it was uh, the Possessed Comeback album. I thought it was a little long, a little dragged out. I was like, I probably would have just done 10 songs and maybe shortened them a little bit, kept it around the 35-minute mark to just be more reminiscent to, uh, you know, Seven Churches. And just and it was a little dragged out. But I got to say, I liked it. I thought Jeff's voice sounded good. They didn't do anything. I thought for sure they are going to come in and be doing blast beats and fucking Chris Barnes styles vocals where, like, which obviously I like that shit, but like that's not possessed. Like this is dumb as fuck. I, it wasn't like that. I thought it was. I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. Do I like it as much as Seven Churches? No, but um, but I thoroughly enjoyed it and and picked up a CD and LP. So yeah, I would say come back. I would say those two. Yeah, those are the first two that come to mind. I'll go with those. So that's it for this one, Devils. You know what to do? Comments, questions, concerns. Put them in there. Let me know what you think about those posers of Carcass, and I'll see you tomorrow. Later, goddamn it.